This is the New River. It is the longest river entirely confined within Belize. It begins in Southern Orange Walk and empties out into the Carrizal Bay. Because it connects four separate lagoons, it is also known as the New River System and is home to many wildlife species of ecological importance, such as the Jabiru Stork. The wildlife that you'd typically find along the New River would be uh, the Morlet crocodile, the spiny tail iguana, the green iguana, a bunch of different birds. One of the favorite um, attractions for tourists is a crocodile sighting. On sunny days, you can usually see them on the logs on the edge of the river, bathing in the sun and regulating their temperature. And it always fascinates the adults and the kids to see a crocodile so up close. As a kid, when I used to come here, I always found it relaxing, extremely relaxing because it flowed so gently. There are no rapids. You know, you gotta hear the wildlife, the birds, you gotta hear the trees. To me, it's a source of energy. I come here, I meditate, and I really enjoy this river. But besides the wildlife and tourism benefits, the New River system is also a lifeline for the inhabitants of Orange Walk and surrounding villages. A lifeline that is currently under threat. I'm Jalisa Torres, and this is a special episode of Now You Know. But a strange green color displays... For over a month, the there river. have been complaints of resurgence of that punch of water. They have a whole town consuming this water. We don't know what is still in this water. I'm also dealing with the stench of the river. But this time around, it has become worse. In this episode, we'll take a look at challenging issues threatening the new river system, as well as ways we can all help. Let's start from the beginning. There's, you won't see the tarpons rolling anymore. You don't even see the crocodiles in this area. It's really, really bad. So the problem is, is when the temperature rises in the dry season, plus all the additional uh, contaminants that are coming into the river from uh, septic systems from towns and villages and from uh, livestock from agricultural areas, then that increases demand on the oxygen and lowers the oxygen conditions below what the fish can tolerate. I think the New River is, is a very different situation than other rivers in Belize. For example, let's say the Rio Hondo. The Rio Hondo has a, has a very um, steep slope. The way how the river can purge itself is quick, not the scenario in, in, in the New River. The New River basically, um, from headwaters to, to the sea where it goes, um, it's at like zero meters in its elevation. So that means that we're, we're dealing with a very flat river. Uh, this means that it will have a, a slow um, flow um, and specifically during the dry season um, since the level goes down this means that um, we, we start to deal with, with ponds that are filled with water, loaded with nutrients that are basically stagnant. But it became extremely um, a big problem during the drought 2019. That's when people first really noticed it. We have this eutrophication events where we have the algae blooms and the river turns green and it's it's one of the most disheartening uh, encounters that the, that the tourists could have because one of the first things you notice is that the fish kills to see the fish that aren't yet dead coming swimming up to the surface trying to breathe you're sitting only baby tarpons on the surface just dying when the river gets contaminated at this level the tourists start canceling their tours. That has a ripple effect in the economy. We have hotels cancellations, we have restaurants cancellations, we have um, the mom and pop shops would have been providing probably a lunch or a meal, they no longer get that income. Um, and that's just, just from the tourism sector. So a day we would have about approximately between 30 and 50 children reporting to the office with some symptoms of either severe headaches, sore throats, um, allergy reactions, and, and, and a few cases of children actually throwing up in front of you, which developed into a serious situation because our school actually had to lock down. That brought an additional cost to parents. No parents have to keep their kids at home, they have to um, invest in, in, in nannies, babysitters, temporary solutions to try to, to, to um, accommodate their kids being at home. What we did is just try to, to find ways to make things better so the children are least in this environment, but then it doesn't contribute to the amount of, of contact hours and teaching that must take place. To us, it, it's impacting us very directly. And 
We are hoping that every year it gets better, but it's not getting better. It's repeating itself. We, we need to have a strong collaborative effort from all our Rinjok residents in regards to waste disposal. Yes, the Belize Sugar Industries is one of the contributors to this, but we also have uh, many light industries within the district, within the town. The tortilla factories, from the slaughterhouses, from the restaurants, um, everything is draining into the New River. We also have um, agriculture runoff, and um, all of these contribute the load that is um, released into the river. We still have a lot of sewage and other issues coming into the system, primarily from Orange Walk and surrounding communities. Pretty much everything that all the residents use in Orange Walk finds their way to the drains and empties into the New River. Many people don't have the proper soak away. And if we build these proper soak away, all these dirty waters, waste waters, won't end up in the drains that eventually come into the New River. And so I think the Department of the Environment needs to really step up their efforts for monitoring and compliance and enforcement. Some other challenges that we have been facing is in terms of the policy aspect. There is no national framework, uh, legal framework, that um, tells us exactly how we are to manage watersheds. Responsibility or the mandate for watershed management in the country is scattered all about um, several sectors within the government service. And this has led to us looking at watershed from a fragmented, uncoordinated aspect. If this continues, it's going to devastate the tourism in northern Belize because what happens here always finds itself out to the Bay of Corzal and to the Barrier Reef. And so we need to get a hold of it. It's, uh, it cannot continue like this. But it takes a community effort. All households, private sector, local and national. We're evaluating all the different legislations that are available to see which one is more suitable. And once we define that, then we will put in the necessary action to declare it as a conservation zone, as a protected area, whatsoever name it takes. Um, but it, it will have some type of management. And we are implementing, we're working along with um, the town council, with the liquor licensing board and other entities um, so that we could, as a group, could uh, address the issue more um, in a holistic manner um, and having in place requiring the different industries, the different um, households to have in place the proper measures um, so that we could reduce the load that is going into the river and thereby affecting the, how, the health of the new river. One of the issues that people are dealing with right now is the increased uh, hot water that's coming into the system from the, from the sugar refinery. However, there's um, efforts to build cooling towers that should be online for, uh, within six months that would address that issue. We know that through the cooling tower project we'll be addressing our temperature um, loaded water for it to be below 35. There's no specific study to state that that's what is affecting the river. If we see a color change in the river, we take pictures and we notify DOE immediately. If we see that or we hear any report of dead fishes or anything like that, we send notifications, we take out our boat, um, we do our investigation. Whatever information we gather, we share that with the DOE immediately as well, so they could do their own assessment. Households and businesses in the Orange Rock area can assist the relevant authorities who are working in restoring our new river by minimizing our water usage, not disposing of oils in our sinks, using environmentally friendly detergents, since some detergents that we use take longer to break down when they reach to our drains and end up in our new river. So you should be mindful at looking at the labels and you could see which ones are the friendlier ones for the environment. Stop throwing um, garbage into the river. Stop um, draining your wastewater and everything from your household into the river. Um, start to educate, send the message, give the message to everybody um, to ensure that at the end of the day, um, all the activities that we are doing will benefit 
every single person that um, uses or benefits from the goods and services that the New River provides. For more information on what's being done about water pollution and ways you can help, visit our website at doe.gov.bz.